They called it the Sludge Monster, the ticking time bomb, and Chrysler's biggest disaster. But the real story isn't that simple. Once hailed as a symbol of innovation and efficiency, the Chrysler 2.7-liter V6 was supposed to lead the brand into a new era. Instead, it became a cautionary tale, one that stained Chrysler's reputation and left thousands of drivers stranded with blown engines and empty wallets. So what went wrong? Was it bad engineering, corporate denial, or something even worse? This is the untold story of how an engine meant to save Chrysler helped break it instead. So what was the hype about this engine anyway? By the 1990s, Chrysler was making its way back into the market as the brand was recovering from a financially unstable period. The brand was determined to compete in the market. To do so, it planned on modernizing its engines to stand firm against the incredible displays of excellent car engineering by Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. While these Japanese automakers were taking over the market, older engines like the 3.3-liter or 3.5-liter V6 were proving to be heavy and inefficient. The pressure for a better fuel economy was coming from all sides. Under these extreme circumstances, Chrysler was planning on introducing the LH platform to revolutionize the market, and they needed a substantial powerhouse to complement the packaging of these new cars. This is where the 2.7-liter V6 engines come into play. These powertrains were developed by the engineers at Chrysler and were not inherited from any previous engines. With these bad boys, a new modular engine family came to life at Chrysler. The 2.7-liter engines were meant to deliver efficiency in the base models, while the 3.3-liter or 3.5-liter engines were used in higher trims to provide the sheer power that people wanted. The engineers had clear outlines as they went into the process of developing these juggernauts. The engines were supposed to be compact and lightweight, and to achieve this, the blocks and heads were crafted out of aluminum. The fuel economy and the emission regulations were also taken very seriously. A smaller displacement and DOHC were supposed to take care of the fuel economy and multi-port fuel injectors and upgraded combustion control were meant to deal with emissions regulations. The engines were still required to perform exceptionally well. Considering this, the engineers designed them to rev high and produce around 200 horsepower, which was considered good at the time. On top of all this, the company wanted the engines to be low in cost as they were meant for base vehicles. The sludge monsters were designed to perform well. The engineers had put immense work into making these bad boys and it was visible to everyone. The 2.7-liter displacement and the V6 configuration were a good package. The engines had a 9.7 to 1 compression ratio, which improved their fuel economy. The over-square design where the bore was larger than the stroke allowed the engine to rev high and to breathe at such a speed. So what gave these engines this perfect title of the sludge monsters? While everything seemed optimal, something was meant to go wrong. It is not very often that something is actually perfect with zero flaws. For our Chrysler 2.7 liter engines, the flaw that cost them everything was the lubrication system. The engines had a wet sump oiling system which meant the oil was stored in a pan under the crankshaft and was pumped through the engine. This lubrication system did not appear to be very problematic in the beginning, but as time passed, one by one, the problems began to show. The narrow oil passage was one of the primary issues with the system. These passages were not measured to perfection for these engines, as they restricted the oil flow. To make it even worse, a sludge would form in these paths due to heat and oxidation, further limiting the flow of oil through the engine. The oil change cycle recommended by the company was no longer applicable to these engines. They need oil changes more frequently, especially when using conventional oil. But that wasn't all. The internal water pump positioned inside the timing chain cover proved to be a serious reliability issue as leaks would contaminate engine oil and cause engine bearing failure. The timing chain was another problem as it relied on consistent oil pressure. The sludge buildup was the worst possible thing to happen to such a system, and the chain would jump teeth messing up the valve timing. 
and it would even result in valve to piston contact, which meant engine destruction. The sludge obviously had a massive impact on other engine functions as well. Camshafts, crankshaft bearings, and piston wrist pins all received insufficient lubrication. This caused these engine parts to wear out prematurely, knocking the engine and eventually causing total engine failure. If all these issues did not push customers away, there were still more problems. The customers couldn't even get these cars repaired easily due to the complicated design and placement of the parts, which made repairs extremely labor-intensive. Due to such circumstances, more customers could not deal with these issues promptly, and most just avoided them and opted to scrap the car instead of putting in so much effort for nothing. And how did Chrysler deal with the situation? Not well is an understatement. The business was swift to run away from the problems it had caused. And to further destroy the relationship with the customers, the brand put all the blame on the car owners. Dealerships claimed that the engine was having so many issues because the owners were not putting in enough effort into car maintenance. This led to lawsuits against the company, as customers were not getting the performance they were promised, even after following all the company's instructions. These engines definitely went down in the history of Chrysler as the final straw for the customers. The engines would reach failure even before hitting 100,000 miles. This was a new low. The customers were fed up and they no longer trusted Chrysler. Buyers avoided these cars as the resale value went into a downward spiral, further ruining the company's reputation in the market. The insane competition from manufacturing giants like Toyota and Honda was not helping the brand's image either. These companies were putting out cars going way over 150,000 miles with ease. While Chrysler's cars, equipped with the 2.7-liter V6 engines, were struggling to reach 80,000 miles. The vehicles Chrysler was making were now being known as disposable vehicles that just won't last, and the fans wanted none of it. Chrysler used these powerhouses in many of its cars, such as the Dodge Intrepid, 1998-2004, Chrysler Concorde, 1998-2004, and Chrysler Sebring, 2001-2010. The performance was not a complete disaster initially. The cars would reach 190-200 to 200 horsepower. They could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 9 seconds. But once the problems within the engine started to show, Chrysler had customers running in the opposite direction. And rightfully so. The brand suffered tremendously from this disastrous engine. Everything the brand had worked so hard to achieve had been flushed down the drain due to this. The sad part was that Chrysler did not want any of this to happen. The company was actually planning on putting out an engine that would be more efficient, lightweight, and better for the cars. However, it blew up in their faces, and they were left with a destroyed brand reputation and deteriorating customer loyalty. Their target market went to other brands for more reliable options, and Chrysler's downfall began. The brand was bought by Daimler-Benz in 1998, forming Daimler-Chrysler. This did not help the brand at all. In fact, it worsened its condition as internal conflicts, culture clashes, lack of synergy, and cost-cutting were at their peak. As a result, Daimler-Benz sold the company, claiming the merger was a failure. By 2008, Chrysler had hit rock bottom. Its engineering foundations were falling apart and its finances were at an all-time low. The brand finally filed for bankruptcy. After this, Chrysler began a new chapter. In 2009, Fiat bought the company. The company had suffered a lot, but also learned a lot from its past mistakes. The combination of Chrysler's own experiences and Fiat's strategies was now making way for a new age of Chrysler. Fiat cleaned the lineup at Chrysler. It worked on reducing the complexities of the engines and focused on global platforms and better engineering. The 2.7-liter V6 engines had taught Chrysler that engines must be designed to work flawlessly in the real world, then just do well in the labs. The brand now knew that fuel efficiency doesn't mean anything if the engines die before 100,000 miles. And it now very well understood that ignoring a major problem or blaming it on the owners would not help the business in any way. 
Moving forward, Chrysler was ready and set for its long-awaited redemption. Knowing that a bad engine could destroy the entire brand, Chrysler was very serious about its new engine. The 3.6-liter Pentastar could not be lacking in any aspect, and that was Chrysler's main objective. When the sludge monsters were developed, the focus was on lightweight and efficiency. Now it was on durability and real-world performance. The engines were tested in extreme conditions to confirm their robustness. Chrysler's reliability had been lost due to bad design, corporate denial of the issues, and avoidable failures. But it was finally going to come back due to the smooth power delivery and long-term reliability of the 3.6-liter Pentastar. The sludge monsters were a failure that cost Chrysler its reputation, customers, and reliability. The issues that could have been looked into and solved in the initial stages were ignored, and the company's handling of the failure was even worse. However, Chrysler did not give up. They learned from it and came back stronger. The 3.6-liter Pentastar was the embodiment of redemption for the brand. It was customer-friendly, cheap, and easy to repair and tough. Chrysler's 2.7 V6 engine disaster symbolized everything wrong with the company. Bad communication, short-term thinking, and faulty engineering. Even if it did wreck the brand, the contributions of the sludge monster and the reinvention of the business cannot be ignored. These engines will always be remembered among the brand and its fans as the engines that changed everything. The Chrysler 2.7 V6 engines are an unforgettable part of the brand's history, and their story is simply too intriguing to ignore. For more stories like these, subscribe to our channel. Let us know your thoughts on the sludge monster in the comments below. See you soon!